Hello, algebra students. So we'll start with something familiar and then we'll apply it in a new way. So first example here says, which expression gives the distance on the number line between two unknown points? So distance is one of those things that we learned a long time ago and we've talked about it a lot. If you remember distance and difference are synonymous. They mean the same thing. And yes, they do mean subtract, if you remember that. So yay, we can subtract two numbers to find its, their difference or distance. But remember that difference or distance, either one, are always, always, always positive. Now it's easy enough to rig something to always be positive when you know what the numbers are. Like, for example, if I was finding the difference between 5 and 7, it would be easy enough to make sure that I get a positive answer by just putting 7 first and then subtracting the 5. However, we have two unknown points, C and D. I don't know which one is larger. C might be larger, D might be larger. And so if I were to just subtract them, like we do in A, without doing anything else, it might be positive, it might not. And so that is not the best expression for this. We need something that says whatever answer we get should be positive. And those are absolute value bars. That's what absolute value bars say, right? We do whatever's in the inside. So subtracting C minus D and then whatever answer we get, that says make it positive. And so the correct Selection here is B, the absolute value of C minus D would give us the distance or the difference. And again, don't be freaked out by those bars. They just mean make your answer positive. They represent a number's distance from zero, so they're always positive. Now, the next step though says evaluate the expression from number one or from the last example here to find the distance between negative 5.4 and 6.9. So this is an example that students do wrong all the time. When they want to find distance between these two numbers, they often tell me, well, I'll start with 6.9 and I'll subtract 5.4. But that won't work because this is the distance between 6.9 and positive 5.4, and we don't want that. We want the difference between these two numbers, um, 6.9 and negative 5.4. So I'm gonna do it the way they asked me to do it by evaluating the expression we found. So the expression we found said take C minus D and then take the absolute value of that. And then written this way, it doesn't matter what order you go in. So I think I'll just go in the order that they gave me. I'll get the same answer if I use the absolute value bars. So five, negative 5.4 minus 6.9, and then when I'm done, take the absolute value of that. So if I'm already in debt about five bucks, that's that negative, and then I go and borrow six more, another negative, uh, basically my debt here is adding up. So yeah, it's minusing and it's subtracting, however, since I was already down and I'm going more down, when I go to do my side work here, I'm going to combine them. Uh, what you guys think of is adding. So 4 plus 9 is 13. 5 plus 6 is 11 plus 1 is 12. And then I find out that I'm in debt, 12.3. Now, of course, when you take the absolute value of that, though, you're going to lose the negativity. But remember to do that as your last step. And we find that these two numbers are about 12 Point three units apart. Now what would have happened if you had plugged them in in the other order, if you had started with the 6.9? Well, if you start with that one, be careful because you need to take 6.9 and subtract the other number, and the other number is negative 5.4. And so we're going to see that second negative sign, and a lot of times when students learn about two minuses in a row, they say to me, well, okay, why does that exist? Well, because sometimes when you plug in the real numbers that you have, they, it happens. So you have to know how to deal with that subtracting a negative number. And the easiest way we've talked about of subtracting a negative number is just to say, well, that's the same as adding a positive number. And then 
you can see why we end up adding in the margins when we're combining 5.9 and 6.4. So we're still going to get 12.3. Now this time it's positive 12.3, but we're taking the absolute value. We end up with the same answer in the end anyway. So 12.3, 12.3, whichever way you go. All right, you guys. Happy learning.